Out there, Dan here from Geek Ass Radio, doing another must read comic book video. This is where I talk about some of the best comics and explain to you why you must read them. This week, I'll be discussing Blankets by Craig Thompson. And yes, this is a book that you know, it, you don't really need my word for it when it comes to Blankets. It's one of the most well regarded books of the probably last 20 years. If you look, best books of the 2000s, this is on it. So, there are people out there that are much better at this, much more well, well respected that will say, go ahead, that have heap praise upon Blankets. So I'm just adding my name to the pile, but hey, maybe people forgot about it because it's been some time. So maybe I'll just remind those, or for some, for maybe for a select few, let them know why Blankets is such an amazing book. And uh, I won't be honest, this is a book I just recently picked up uh, and read. It was been on my must read list for some time. Earlier this year though, went ahead, got it at the library. As you can see, this is a book that's been read for some time, you can see why. And I, and I absolutely adored it. And you know, this is Greg Thompson's story. Um, certainly, you know, it's coming from a very personal place. I'm sure some things have been changed and adjusted as you know, to fit the story he wants to tell. But still within that, you can really tell there's a lot of authenticity, starting with the title. So the title Blankets, it's you know, certainly a, a literal uh, representation of what the story is about and also kind of a allegorical one as well um, and a metaphorical one. And it starts very, and you right from the beginning, you can kind of see where that title is coming from. You know, he, it comes from a family that it's not the, the most well-off family. Him and his brother share this bed, and with sharing the bed, they also share a blanket. And the conflict that ensues, you can, you know, anyone that has had a brother or knows kids, two, two kids sharing the same bed, it's going to lead to a lot of conflict, a lot of fighting. And that is exactly what happens, them, them not agreeing, but also seeing kind of the impact that has on, on his father and what he does. And I find the representation of his father quite interesting. If you just even look at the way he's displayed here, you know, a shadowy figure, like he's looking, just like taking up so much of this image, looking down at his kids, very striking and almost almost like a horror villain. And his, 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 what, his father's a big force here and there, but it, you don't see him a lot because this deals with both him growing up and a lot of his adolescence, more of his high school, senior year in, in, in high school as well. And his father is not, I would say, physical, physically abusive, but certainly psychologically abusive in, in some of the things he does, you know, sticking them into this like closet-like uh, area when they're not behaving to kind of show, you know, show his force to discipline them. And you can kind of see the effects it has. And I think it also gets into, you know, having to sleep on this cot that is, you know, obviously uncomfortable, representing, making it look like a monster that he has to sleep on. And perhaps it's, you know, perhaps it was his dad trying to do what he thought was right or, or what have you. But that's one thing, too, I think what's, what this book does is it, it touches upon a lot of these kind of truly horrific and bad things. There's even, like, an element of molestation that, pops up and it, it doesn't necessarily say things verbatim but you can certainly read through the, through the lines and what you would think you know this this is a book by all means that could have just been nothing but sadness just sadness and tears and, and melodrama but that, that's not really the case it, it's it has certainly emotional moments it only took me a few pages and i was like i was emotionally Im impacted by it I, i'm not gonna lie you know this, this, this father and son dynamic him and his brother um and i love him and his brother's dynamic and how it that's how it starts off and how it evolves you know they're certainly at each other's you know they, they're they're brothers so they fight and bicker but there's they also have a respect and love for each other that they'll, they'll stick up and they want to protect each other and although they do things to each other that maybe are not that so but then when they grow older and i don't, don't want to ruin the sequence because it happens late in the book it just kind of embodies just how their relationship has evolved as they get older and how they've kind of separated and be grown distant not because like they hate each other there's been some sort of huge fight it's just the way that life has worked and how they've you know grown apart and they've probably kind of gone two different directions and i should mention greg thompson does write and draw this both both um and he's a fantastic storyteller both visually and as well as, uh, you know, his story structure and scripture, I say scripture because it's, it deals with religion, but his script is fantastic. And, it, and as indicated, one, one thing that this does is 
Um, he's dealing with the fact that he's also coming from a very religious family that has strict rules, but also, you know, going to a public school. And as someone who uh, can kind of relate to that, growing up as a kid, I came from a very religious family. We didn't go to church once a week. We went to church three times a week, Sunday mornings, Sunday nights, and Wednesdays. And, and how you're kind of stuck in between two worlds in a way where, you know, you, you go to public school, you see these kids, you, you, you live, you see the way they live their lives. It's not necessarily, and then you go to, to church and they're, they're preaching a certain, certain set of values. And sometimes they align, sometimes they don't. Sometimes over here makes a lot more sense. Sometimes over here makes a lot more sense. So you don't really know where you find yourself. You're kind of lost between both worlds. You're like, you, and you find yourself end up being an outsider in both where, you know, you're in, in the, church group you're, you're the kid that you know is the out is maybe the bad kid or not following the rules like everyone else but in in the public school you're the goody two-shoes and just how nothing about you has changed just the situation in the world has changed and i found that really fascinating and i think that's really we can tell a story is coming from a very authentic place is those little small details that aren't necessarily touched upon often when religion is brought up in, in a book or a story it's very heavy-handed and it's always about you. There's always going to be that scene where they go into a church and a crucifix and there's a thunderstorm and they're screaming at God or denouncing religion or, or they're doing the opposite. And it's like, oh, God, save me from whatever. It's it it's very often never hand, handled with tact by any stretch of the imagination and tends to engulf the story. That's not really the case here. It's not necessarily about a religion and how it's just how, you know, different pieces uh, affect your life. And it's just, it's that seeking of comfort and love and intimacy, you know, as you that you get from a blanket, or you know that that obviously tying into that, uh, and a big piece of this too is him kind of finding his first love and having his first crush. And I think anyone can kind of relate to that, and just the intensity that happens. And when you're you know in in that relationship, even if, or you just met someone, and you know you've only known them for a week, or you've only been dating for a month, but this is the one, this is going to be it. Like we are the Romeo and Juliet, except for the tragic ending that everyone wants to be. This is who I'm meant to be with. It doesn't matter what the obstacles are. We're going to figure it out. Even though you're kind of avoiding some obvious issues, like they live separately. They meet at this church function and then they kind of have a small moment together. But also like within that, you see a lot of, they're kind of in that age where, you know, their, their view of their parents is changing. Um, as the parents are dealing with their own issues, you know, the, his girlfriend's parents are dealing with their own divorce and marriage problems, and you know, something as a kid that you maybe you maybe hid from, and now you're seeing your parents in a different light that they're they're just just as human as you, and it just there's a lot going on in this book, but it's also because you're seeing this this, this person's life and, and and you're seeing it kind of go through, it never feels like it's ever overwhelming or trying to hammer in one specific point per se. It's, you, you kind of see the connecting threads. Uh, bit by bit and how they just relate to this the avenue of life and the the progression of life and just that need to find yourself if you're you know a coming of age it's you know textbook coming of age story um done really well and what i love about this too is like i hope they actually never make a movie of this not because it doesn't deserve it because it doesn't need a movie to legitimize itself and i don't think it would be nearly as powerful or as memorable because it wouldn't be coming from the person who lived it. It would be coming from someone else. And you, you know, you, as you get those degrees of separation and sure a story could do this and do it fine. But I think the, the personal touch you get from someone who at least lived portions of that life or it's inspired from, from their life, it just means a little bit more. And when I, when I read these books and I try to pick the ones for, for must read comics, what I really try to do is focus on books that I feel like you can give anyone who has been reading comics forever or has never read a book or never read a comic because maybe they don't take comics seriously maybe they feel comics or not to the level of other mediums of art like uh like a novel or a film but i think a book like blanket shows that that is the case i know that's that old saying about how a book you know a picture is worth a thousand words and when you have hundreds of pictures and also words you can tell one hell of a story and that's to me what blanket does it tells one hell of a story that you know has an emotional impact, has great characters. It never goes into a specific direction. It just kind of flows and tells its story. It's not really about the plot, uh, and that's the way I tend to. I appreciate stories that are about that. That's not you know. There's no huge stakes here, but in, in, in a way, there's huge stakes because 
This is about him trying to figure out who he's going to be for the rest of his life. And what more than you need than that? But you, but it's not necessarily, you know, there's no one decision here that's going to change him. It's about it's a bunch of little decisions. And often with coming of age, it's always that one big thing, right? It's like, will they go to this school? Will this girl date him? Will they go to this party? And this is not that. It's, it's, it's much more about just what would actually happen. And I, you know, it, it, I found everything about this structure, from the structure to its ability to kind of combine and, and, and approach really sensitive topics, but in a really tactful way, remarkable. Uh, now there's other books, there's all the must read books I've talked about are good and to, I would say great. This is, I think of all of them, maybe next to Essex County, uh, the, the best one and the, the most impressive one uh, on every level. Um, and unfortunately, I've not read more of Craig Thompson's stuff. I, I need to really check it out. It's really hard to, I think, follow up a book like this. You know, this, I, it's, you know, in a way you don't need to because it's like, this is what more can you have to say? Um, but highly, highly recommend this. As you could see, this is a very well-worn book as many people have read it already. As I said, I'm just adding my name to that ever-growing pile of people that say, like, it's just a it's a brilliant book because it is. So go ahead and check it out. Um, if you want to ca catch up for more from me, go to Geekcast Radio. Check out all the videos. I've been doing videos about reviews of all different types of comics. If you feel there's a comic that should be a must read, let me know in the comment section below. If I have not read it, I'll check it out and maybe do a video of it someday and share my thoughts. But for now, remember comics are for everyone. The key is finding the right one. Until next time, thanks for watching.